what's up guys so um i just got off of work and it was funny because I, I had a friend and he was asking me uh hey noah what's a good way to manage stress and you know i thought about this because i've definitely been in, in a lot of situations where i've been stressed out during the week So, what I wanted to tell him, actually let me uh, put this up. Better, right? You can kind of see me a little bit better. Anyway, so what I advise is I tell people, hey, find something that makes you laugh. Whether that's like a comedy show on Netflix or maybe it's just funny YouTube videos or on Facebook. Find something that can entertain you. Like I like personal accounts like King Batch. Like I'll do that stuff because it just lets, it kind of like helps me relieve stress and kind of takes worries off my mind and different things like that. The second thing that I usually recommend for people to help manage stress is to do something that's just for you. Right, you work so much for another person, you know, whether it's working at a job or maybe you're working on your own, you're working for yourself or you're at school, you're doing a ton of things that are for somebody else, but you're not doing enough things for yourself. So I give an example, last Friday, my brother and I, it was after a long week, my brother was like, yo, you wanna play video games this weekend? And I was like, yo, I'm down. So literally Friday night, all we did was play video games and eat pizza. And when I'm telling you, I woke up the next morning just feeling so much better, so much happier, it was like game changing. So if you could find something that is just for you, if you're a lady, maybe just getting your nails done. If it's a, if you're a dude, maybe it's just you know going out with your boys, right? Playing basketball or playing video games, watching a Netflix show. Do something that's just for you because when you do that, it helps again to keep your mind off of what you're stressing about in the first place. And the third and final thing I usually tell people to help manage stress is to just really think about what's stressing you out and consider if it's worth being stressed out about. Sometimes we get stressed about, about just the smallest things, you know, those first world problem type things where it's like you have to put things into perspective and really consider, is it really that bad or is it I'm just overreacting? And I don't mean to be harsh when I say this, there's just so, much, so many things that I've thought about that I've stressed out about that I'm like, I took a second thought and I was like, this is just not that important. So those would be my three recommendations if you, you know, if you are stressing out there today, you're like, I need to manage stress, do that. Find something that makes you laugh. Do something that's just for you. And then really consider if it's worth being stressed out about. So I'm gonna catch you guys later. I'm gonna go work out. I got legs today and I'll catch y'all later. Woohoo! Let's do it. What is up, guys? So I'm doing a new thing where I kind of do a voiceover of the workouts that I'm doing. And today, really, the workout was a lower body focus workout. And I'm gonna kind of share like my split kind of going moving forward um, and really what it is it's a full body workout with like an upper body focus or a lower body focus this day was actually a lot like a lower body focus and really the biggest thing that i started off first was just warming up not a lot of people do warm-ups and stretching and really doing some mobility work so i'm doing some cat cows i'm doing you know some lower back stretches right before i go into my deadlift now the deadlift i am still recovering from a herniated disc it's been about two months now so a lot of the weights that i'm using are fairly light went up to like maybe 165 i want to say for four sets of 10 and it was just very light really focusing on staying my heels and pushing back and I, th I think for me this is a great start and like i said leave your ego at the door it's all about time all about patience and doing it right i then move to the leg press again with my lower back i can't do really too much of loading on top of my shoulders uh really putting pressure on the lower back so this is when i did my super set of doing my leg presses. I do between 10 to 12, four, uh, three sets of 10 to 12, and then I go straight into a plank. And for the plank, I usually hold it between, anywhere between, I've been going up every five seconds every time I do it. So right now, I'm at around like 50, 55 seconds, and I'll just do that, you know, back to back with the leg press. And the main thing too, and you see what I'm doing, is just keeping my hips low. You know, that's the biggest thing, is keeping my hips parallel to the ground and not raising them. And also another neat trick is keeping your arms parallel and not holding your wrist, your fist together. Now, another one of my something I actually just started trying out actually was lunge and shrug. So this is where you're basically taking two dumbbells, you're lunging and then you're shrunk, uh, you're shrugging in between each one. And this was really cool because I was able to hit a lower and upper body in basically one exercise and one set, I mean. So it was really cool. 
um, to be able to do both. So I really felt it on this one. It got me tired. Um, and yeah, it was, it was definitely pretty, pretty tough. But like to combine two exercises together, saves time, it's more efficient. And you just get a lot more work done. You get out there 30, 30 40 minutes. So here is another uh, super set where I do my reverse flies on an incline bench, really focusing on pulling my elbows back. In fact, I actually think I see something wrong. I'm actually not pulling my elbows straight up. I'm kind of pulling them back, and I need to pull them straight up to the sky. So this is not what you need to do exactly. I'll make another video where I do this correctly. Um, I can definitely tell that I'm not. And hey, it's a learning process, man. We always find things that we need to improve on. Um, and then I usually superset this with a kind of close grip like a close grip incline bench press with dumbbells i push the dumbbells together keep my chest uh tense and i'm just pressing as if it was just like simple right on the chest and this is a quick burn to build my upper chest so these last two really these these last two supersets are like areas where i want to improve on so my chest my basically my rear delts so my rear shoulders and um low back health of course i started doing extensions don't go all the way up. A lot of people really like to overextend. I'm trying to keep it to where when I go up and squeeze my glutes, I'm basically in a straight line. And I'm using a weight that's like fairly light, nothing too crazy, nothing too heavy. See that guy? He's wearing the same uh, same color I am. It's pretty, <laughs> pretty dope. But I superset this with a quick burner of weighted push-ups. Um, I know it's sometimes hard to put it on your back, but basically took a 35 pound and I just did as many as I could. I think I did around 13, let's say 12 or 13. Getting better each time. Each time I do it, I try to improve every time. So I hope this workout was super helpful for you. It'll be in the description box below. Go ahead and check it out. Do it. Let me know what you think in the comments. And now let's go ahead and see what my post-workout shake looks like. What is up guys? So I just got finished making my post-workout shake. Now a big question I get, ooh, it's still got a lot of it in my mouth. So a big question that I get is, Noah, what should I have after my workout? Should I have a protein shake? You know, what should that look like? So what I wanna do is share what I put into my post-workout protein shakes and Definitely, this is not something I say everybody needs to do. This is just what I do based off of the goals that I'm trying to reach and the time of the day that I'm actually working out. And that actually plays a big factor into it. So the first ingredient for my post-workout shake is almond milk, specifically the chocolate unsweetened. Now I do almond milk because my body doesn't take like too much dairy. I'm a little bit lactose intolerant, so it doesn't take, you know, normal milk too well, um, but I also like the texture of what it makes, you know, the shakes in the first place. And that's the first ingredient for this post-workout shake. The second ingredient is whey protein. Now, whey protein is extremely important because your body is basically trying to repair and rebuild its muscles after your workout. And the best way and the most efficient way to do that is by consuming protein and using protein. So if you're gonna work out, you gotta make sure you're having some sort of protein afterwards. So for me, I usually do two scoops of whey protein for my optimal nutrition. That's just what I like to use. Um, so I'll do those two and then I'll move on to the next ingredient, which is creatine. Now, creatine, I get a lot of questions of whether or not people should take that. And I'll say this. So what creatine does is it helps increase your muscle stores and also gives you a little bit more energy. So, you know, it helps you have more high intensity type workouts. You put a little bit more in and it also helps you build some muscle strength. Now I tell people, unless you're really in the gym working out, don't really need to take creatine. Your body naturally makes it anyway. Just to let you know how much I put into my shake, I usually put in five grams, which is just like one little spoonful, and I'll put it in my shake. So it's super simple, nothing too crazy. Um, definitely say that this is maybe more for more intermediate to advanced um, exercise or weightlifters or something like that. Now the fourth ingredient to my protein shake is 
Greek yogurt. And why do I do that? One, it helps the texture of the shake. I like to have a very, you know, like almost like a milkshake malt type taste and not just super, super liquidy. So Greek yogurt will do that for me. And specifically the brand that I use is Fage, Fage, F-A-G-E. Let me know whatever it's called, I have no clue. But it is a really good option. I do the zero fat option, it tastes pretty good in the shake. I don't like to eat Greek yogurt outside the shake. It tastes terrible, but Greek yogurt also has a decent amount of protein. So it just adds to the whey protein that I already put in. So, you know, just making sure, again, making sure I have a protein filled shake. Now, the fifth ingredient that I add is peanut butter. And I add peanut butter, one, because it adds really good unsaturated fats to my shake, but it also just kind of gives that, you know, really good shake, milkshake type taste at least for me, I learned this when I worked at Lifetime Fitness and I was making different shakes for different shakes and smoothies for different people. They had us add peanut butter and man, that changed the game. So I add peanut butter for the fat and for the taste and it adds a little bit more to the texture. And then ingredient six, which is definitely optional. I do it based off of like how I'm feeling, but I'll add oats. And these are just normal dried oats. And the reason why I'll add them is because one, they give me a little bit extra carb source, uh, but really it's just, they have a lot of fiber in it. And like I said, I like to work out in the morning. So I'll have this big shake that will kind of hold me through until breakfast. Cause that fiber has got to keep me full and keep me satiated, satiated, satiated. I don't even know keep me full until that time to eat breakfast. So those are really the six ingredients that go in here. So almond milk, whey protein, creatine, Greek yogurt, peanut butter, and oats. So it's a lot. Yeah, I know it's a lot of stuff. In fact, what I'll do is I'll put the calorie amount and macro amount, you know, right at the bottom of the screen. That's why I also don't recommend it for everybody because it is very calorie heavy. And again, I don't use it as a meal replacement. I kind of just use it to add to my meals. Um, but that's what I do. Like I said, I'm, my goal is just to retain my muscles, stay lean and having protein after a workout really helps. So let me know in the comments what you usually add to your, like what do you usually have for your post-workout snack, meal, shake, whatever it is. Let me know, I'm interested to hear it. And let me know if you're interested in trying that. So I hope this was helpful. Catch you later. You already know, embrace the hype. Woo!